Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to a new video that I will be shooting. So in this series, I guess, if you guys show up support, I'll do a series of some popper builds that I've just randomly homebrew and thought of while I was stuck inside during the quarantine. And I made this with mostly cards that I found just scattered around my collection. And today I'll be showing you some Tamir ninjas and popper. Let's go on with the video. All right, so I'm gonna show, so again, popper is a format subject to a lot of variability. You can literally make anything work as long as it has like some just good cards. And for that, we will be starting this deck with four copies of Fairy Seer. So Fairy Seer is very good because it's, um, it's a flying body and it's one mana flying when it enters battlefield scry 2. Now this will help you filter and look find whatever you're looking for. And yeah. So we'll leave that there on the side. And then next we'll be running four copies of Fairy Miscreant. Now Fairy Miscreant is also another of these interesting videos because look, it's one and one blue flying, and then when it ETBs, if you have another creature named Fairy Miscreant, you draw a card. So if you have one on the field already and you play another one, that's basically just pay one, draw a card, which is pretty good, and also flies. And then a third set of creatures we will be running is these, called Changeling Outcast. They're one and a black. And they just have Changeling, so this card is every creature type. So if your opponent happens to have any, like, lords in effect, you know, your Changeling Outcast benefits from that. And it can't block, and it can't be blocked, so... Another one of these that we will run. And then lastly, we start getting into the good stuff or the ninjas. And first off, we have four copies of Ninja of the Deep Hours. So you never played this for four, I guess you could for Desperate, but it's Ninja Two for one and a blue. And then whenever it deals combat damage, you draw a card. So again, blue is just insane with its advantages. Play that. And then next up on some creatures, we have three copies of Ninja of the New Moon. Now this is one of your, I guess, quote unquote bombs, you would call them. So this is a four cost ninja, ninja for Ninja 2, three and a black. So again, it's literally just a huge beat stick of six, three, six, three. That's good power right there. And then I run also, odd enough, I run a one Moonblade Shinobi. It's two and a blue. And then when it attacks, deals combat damage. You create a woman blue illusion token with flying, so you want to be evasive if you can. And some are wondering, but wait, how do you like attack with your min ninjas? Because ninjas don't fly. Well, here's where the interesting stuff comes in. You run three. I run three of these. These are called smoke shroud. So they're enchantment aura. They enchant one one and has flying. And then whenever this is in the grave and ninja enters the battlefield, you can return this attached to that ninja. So again, these are great for if someone just mills them, makes you discard them out of your hand, or if you just happen to have more than seven cards, you can discard them. Or you can just hard cast them on a ninja, really. They're all good regardless. Or you could like um, this attached to like one of these one ones. And then when you bounce it, this will go to the grave. And then when you play the ninja, you know, it'll attach to it. So again, these are great. And then next you have four copies of Preordain. Again, Preordain is insane and popper right now for blue. It's basically a sorcery scratch who draw a card. You dig three. That's insane. And also, I run four of these String of Disappearances. So, these is great against uh, any non blue decks. So, it's one for instant return target creature to its owner's hands. And then that controller's creature may pay two uh, blue blue. And if they do, they copy this. But most of the times, you play it and they don't have blue. So, this is a pretty good pinpoint removal. And then next up, I run three of these cards, of one mine. So this costs two less if you control a human creature and a non-human creature, and you draw two cards. So this will effectively cost one in a blue, because if you think about it, our Changeling Outcast is, has Changeling, it's every creature. And then Fairy Miscreant and Fairy Seer, they're both fairies. And then all my ninjas are human, well, most of them. Well, look, Ninja Deep Hour, human. Moonblade Shinobi, human. Well, this is just Spirit Ninja, but anyway. 
so yeah those are some of the core cards that i run and then the rest is kind of like kind of meta defined totally up to you so i run three copies of spell pierce counter target non-creature spell unless opponents pay two i like these because um well spell pierce is pretty efficient and you can run counter spell but it's blue blue which i find a little be a uh, this cost casting cost to be a little stringent so i do not play it i have two copies of brainstorm because I can't f because um, I just figured they're a good addition and top decking manipulation is usually pretty freaking good. I have two copies of Opt, which is just uh, here. Let me sorry. Let me bring the Chinese one to the back one. Here we go. So it's square one draw a card in form of an instant. You could bait out people, I guess. You could hold up like one mana for spell peers, but then if they don't play anything that you want to counter, you could just play an Opt or something. Pretty good, along with Brainstorm by the way. And I have one copy of Negate. Um, again, it's again these cards are the few cards I'm showing left behind. They're kind of just meta dependent. Like if people play a lot of creatures, okay, you don't play negate then. You play um, essence scatter, one in a blue, you know. And then as for lands, I actually could use your help on lands, but I just stick with basic six swamps and twelve islands. So twelve islands and six swamps because the majority of your deck is blue you just have a little splash of black here and there for i just the colors and this deck usually runs this deck again i made this deck mostly with modern horizon stuff modern horizon a lot of stuff is from modern horizon the rest of the stuff you should honestly if you play magic and if you're not a total like newcomer to magic you should have some of these stuff lying around like i mean the gate is just good counter spell if you play blue opt everybody has brainstorm EDH players love that and some peel, spell pierce i mean it's just it's good so this deck in total cost me about five dollars but then again i already have some of these i think the most expensive cards are will probably be ninja of the deep hours because a lot of people do play that and counter spell will also be like about a buck or two but again that's totally up to you again don't follow, don't blindly follow some deck lists out there. So some cards require you to kind of just analyze what meta you're playing, like your play group. And just, you gotta have to build some cards around them. Like, like these are just very flexible cards I have in my deck. I, either I'm always ready to swap these guys out for something, but the core is most likely just these creatures. These are the like meat of the deck, these ninjas. So yeah, that goes about it for my deck tech. Um, if you like seeing this type of stuff from me, and you want to hear some more, see some more, you know, uh, let me know. Drop a like, comment down below, tell me what kind of decks you want to see. I could try to maybe find a maybe homebrew or something like that for you guys to see. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time.